Whoa. Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, everyone. Um, join me as I do another painting. Recently, in my corner of the world, the weather has been very dramatic. We've been getting lots and lots of thunderstorms. So I've got some footage and some photos of it, and I thought I'd do a painting of it. Instead of my stereotypical hot pink for background wash, I actually am doing an orange. Um, this is because I know that my painting is mostly going to be blue. So the opposite color of blue is orange. And that will help that blue color from the sky and clouds stand out. And it'll also help the lighting where I have a couple of street lamp lamps um, really pop. And it'll just make it look like it's almost glowing, hopefully. So the majority of this painting will be the sky. And the sky has a lot of clouds in it today. Those clouds kind of fade into each other and fade out. And they don't have hard, defined lines. I'm starting off with blocking in my color values. So we have a lighter color value, which is going to be that light grayish blue. And we also have darker areas in the clouds. So I've got my um, deeper blue that will be those really dark shadowy parts of the cloud. Also, I'm intentionally starting off with the clouds. I do have items, um, some stuff in the foreground that I will want to put in later. But I'm doing the clouds first because they are going to be kind of my background, and um, it, to me it makes sense to get the background done, get it how you want it to look, and then go on to working on things that are in front that will need more touching up. That way you don't have to go back and forth between fixing the lines of the front image and fixing the texture of the background. Also, if I were to do that and needed to touch up the background, the sky, um, it's very possible that it would become kind of disjointed from the image and it'd be fairly obvious to see that I had to go back and fix it but didn't fix it well enough that it blended it in to the image. I am going to be using this painting technique um, and I think it's mostly used for watercolors and gouache but it's going to be called wet on wet and this is when the paper that you're working on whether it's paint or water is already wet from one of those two things. And then I'll be going over it with more paint or more water. And that'll help the pigments from the paints um, blend into each other and create softer lines instead of having your harsh, um, strong lines. One thing that I was having troubles with here was I didn't feel like my light areas were light enough. So what I did was something that I think everyone should know if they're into water or gouache painting is if you have some paper towels or a rag, all you'll need to do is, and simply what you'll do is just take that cloth or paper towel and dab in the areas where you want it to be lighter. And this is when it's still wet. Um, but what this will do is it'll help pick up some of the pigment without smearing your painting. And I actually continued doing this a lot across the sky because I thought it really helped give me that soft, fuzzy texture that clouds are. And I just continued doing this throughout the sky um, to lighten those really light, soft areas. And then you'll see me later put in some more dark blue paints to make those dark blue clouds much more defined. I think that doing the sky I thought was going to be super easy and it's like okay I can get this done really fast but it actually did take me a little longer than what I was expecting to and um, it took patience and I wasn't being very patient because I was trying to get out to go somewhere but I did get it done and I think it looks really good for a sky. I think I was able to convey that it was very dramatic and moody outside with the colors and the different textures that I have in it. Here I just mixed up a very good solid base sky color where there wasn't any clouds where it was fairly bright and clear. So I just went in and made that more solid so you can't see so much of the orange and I did bring it up into the clouds a little bit because there were patches where you could see the regular sky.
sky is pretty much done. I'm just going to go in with some blue just to put a little bit in on this, what will be the street in my image. And then I'm going to let that dry. Um, and then we'll come back and do some of the foreground stuff. down in this area for my reference I've got a parking garage and some cars and some trees and a telephone pole and so I'm blocking in my tree shape right now they're going to be very dark in my image so this will be theoretically my darkest value in my entire painting and I'll just kind of like have those major blocks in and then try to feather it out towards the edges so it looks like it's more fluffy and tree-like. put in some darker things closer towards the edge which are going to be our very closest items more or less there's um, a car and then the road that's further away from the lamp that I have in there and some buildings and we're just going to try to gradiate that to where I'm going to be putting that street lamp and where that light will be hitting the ground and in here you'll see me use that wet on wet technique again um, instead of using paints mixing with paints, I'm going to use paints mixing with water. So that'll kind of like dilute my pigments and it will pull it around on the page but it won't cover the area in paint completely. You've seen me using my big brush for the whole painting until now. And this is because I'm going to start going into details. I'm going to put that telephone pole in with its wires. And so I want to use a smaller brush. Um, it's generally recommended that you use as big a brush as you can for as long as possible. And that helps, it just helps with understanding how to break your shapes down. And it helps with preventing you from going into too small of detail too fast. I know I'm guilty of that, so I try to stick with the big brush and do what I can with that as long as possible until I need to go into details.
noticed in my reference that there were some light orange areas in the clear sky part and I was trying to figure out how I would do that and I know that gouache is reactivated by water so I was thinking if I take my brush and just rinse it out in the water and use the water to pick up and reactivate that pigment and then just keep picking it up with my brush and rinsing it out I'd be able to get those orange stripes and that's what you're seeing me do right here even though it looks like I'm just kind of swiping doing weird stuff also the only reason why there are orange stripes behind that paint is because I've already done that pre-wash of orange for my whole entire painting if it was just white behind it I probably would have had to pick up the pigment and figured out how to carefully apply more orange in there. I probably would, the, would have done that with my colored pencils, to be honest. favorite parts. I really think that this is where um, my art pieces really come together um, just because it's probably like the little details that make it just that much better of a painting although I guess at this point it's now mixed media but for those of you who've seen my work you know that after my painting my base my basic shapes and stuff have been painted out I'll let that dry and then I go in to add more texture and more detail with my colored pencils. You can see that I am putting in some more lighter values into the clear sky part. And you'll see me put some more pinky orange into those stripes that I was talking about earlier. And then I'll go into the clouds and add more color into that and make it have some more texture. And give it a little more shape knowing how the direction, how the cloud is going in its direction. So that you can understand that it is puffy, big, and round. I will continue putting in more details with my colored pencil, and then I do go back and forth between that and my paints, just because I thought there was a little bit of an issue of not having dark enough values, um, especially in the trees and the buildings and the cars that were in the foreground. But yeah, I'm pretty much done you'll just finish out watching me do my touch-ups with my colored pencils and enjoy some quiet music
Anyways, that's about it for this painting. Um, if you like this, go ahead and like the video and subscribe. And I hope I see you in another video soon. Bye!